All right, as uh, promised, and we've been showing you uh, visuals of uh, the virtual memorial service in honor of uh, the jazz legend uh, Jonas Gwangwa. At the moment, his son, Mjalefe Gwangwa, is uh, speaking. Let's take you there. He's giving the much needed uh, skills that I could not hold myself, but Pitat Ladi and other promoters in this country, they gave me those skills. And so when I finally worked for him as his manager, I had better knowledge of the industry. I had better knowledge of what's going on, the ins and outs, copyrights, Samro, and all those things, and the world travels, bookings, how they work. And th- now I was, I had more powerful knowledge. And he said, you see, that's why I say, come and work with me. And I said, Papa, but sometimes I had to go through that to get the degree to be able to come and work with you because uh, Peter Lady gave me a position of being an AR manager at Team Music Man, which was a position that was not offered in any institution here in South Africa. So you had to learn through the people like uh, Bopadi in New Orleans, you learn what an AR, AR manager is and through his works, then I go to understand him. But as a father, he was a disciplinarian. He made sure that we do the right things all the time. He made sure that we respect anybody who comes because he was a very humble person. And, uh, you know, when you say talk about Papa, to me, there's two of them, but in the, in the other two, there's three of them. So his Papa, and then he becomes your brother. And then his Papa, he's the musician, uh, a groomer, a mentor. And I'm saying that because as a musician, a composer, arranger, and performer, that's him but he used to prefer to work with young people and groom them and guide them through their careers, guide them through their music. Some of them, they will come. I'll make an example. You know, we had one of the greatest bassists, uh, Glenn Mafoko. So may his soul rest in peace. When Glenn Mafoko left, Bongani Nube came in. And then Bongani would say, when Papa is preparing a, rep- a repertoire before a show, and Bongan will say, Hey, I wish it I'm not yet ready. And I'll sit with him in the corner, Bongan, do you? And then Papa will guide you. And then the likes of oh, Pesi Bonan and say, Pesi, I think Pesi had another group that we booked through uh, Joy of Jazz. And I said, Pesi, I think my father needs you. I can feel that you've got soul and things like that. And he needs somebody who's like that to, to accompany him who, who sends your phone. And he's, he said to him, Jakes, I cannot, I cannot go and perform it. I might am all powerful. Kere, you are undermining yourself before you even try to perform with him. So go to him. He will correct you. I, I know that I don't know anything about music. I'm the administrator. But when, when I listen to your performances, I think Papa will groom you even further and grow. You know, um, as you heard before when Sipo was talking, uh, Sips. He, he, Sips was, because even us, when we are not here, you come in, Sipo is around. This is what Papa enjoyed. You know, he had a lot of young stars, Bosabelo, young ladies, Boroda, you know, the list is endless. The list is endless. So he preferred. So to them, he only not treated them as musicians, but also treated them as children. Uh, they would come even if there's no performance. Hey, Papa, and then we sit down and talk to them and guide them even through, even talk about their relationships and how to respect their marriages. Uh, so with us as a family, we appreciated that because we got that from both of them, him and my mom. Uh, they never closed doors for anybody in the house. So they they taught us humility. They taught us love. They taught us how to to share them with the world and uh, <laughs> and survive anything that happens in the world because they guided us through what they were doing. Uh, you know, when I talk with Papa, his history, I think uh, I'm glad that Uncle Joe 
Uncle Pado Jordan has mentioned some of the things that he did, uh, raising funds for the ANC in 1955 for the for the Freedom Charter, you know, uh, because part of that he respected the ANC moving forward. We were not born, and uh, but him talking about the history, him talking about his his relationship with the ANC from the times that he knew O.R. Tambo because he was impressed from St. Peter's. He told me that he was impressed with the presence of the late President O.R. Tambo. So whatever the call came from President O.R. Tambo, he said, no, I am doing that. So he left his comfort of the United States to be, when he was called by President O.R. Tambo to be, but the Amandla was called Kunju to do ANC in Angola. So he coined it Amandla Cultural Ensemble after se- se- several discussions with the leadership. And he trained and groomed them. He was happy to work with those uh, with, with those young uh, comrades and he respected them also. You know, because as young stars having left their families and country to go and fight for it. So those who were involved in the, in the cultural ensemble, they really, really, really felt his presence and his works. That laid basis for a lot of things, I think, also on Papa's side, because, uh, you know, when he went to London and some of these works, part of it, um, in London, meeting Bo Talitambo, who introduced him to Richard Attenborough, that helped with the movie Cry Freedom. So they recommended, no, this is the best person to, to from South Africa, this is the best musician that you can ever get to perform and understand the work that you are doing in relation to the movie Christ, mm-hmm. which led to a lot of Papa's firsts, you know, because his first starts from the, <laughs> we were talking in the film, and I said, his, Papa's first starts from the 50s, you know, including receiving those, those, those Grammys in the US in the 60s, that the history has not been told in South Africa, but we know in the US has been spoken about, that was his first, you know, among South African musicians to receive that. The first to receive an Oscar nomination, South African musician to receive that. But now when I discuss with him, he says, I'm the only African musician with two Oscar nominees, and that is not been told by our history pattern. That's a discussion for another day. So there's a lot of things that he did. You find yourself for, uh, when are we going to write our own history? Why are we letting ourselves not write our own history? Mamlindi Mam has spoken before, and there's certain things that she, she spoke about. And I remember Mamlindi Mam never, never forgot Papa from the times of first act, including uh, our president, Tabo Mbeki, who always visited Papa when Papa was ill. And Mamlindi, we met some time ago, I think uh, she was in... She was in uh, she was in Mozambique at that time, and she would say, she would say to us, Mojalefa, sometimes you need to talk to your father so that I can understand what he wants. And I said, Mamzo, Papa speaks with his trombone. That's what he wants to do. But uh, there's a lot of people around the, uh, the country and the world. When I go and travel with him around the world, and they say, you know, your dad, you know, you're dead. You, you, you go to Germany, <laughs> you go to France, you go to Ethiopia, you go to Ghana, you go to China, you go to Australia, Brazil, and they, they'll tell you, hey, you're dead. You know, one of the, uh, one of the most touchy thing that happened was in 2010, when there was the launch of... Uh, sort of uh, the Nossi Jazz Festival in Angola in Luanda. And then the president came, you know, and the president of Angola came and he said, uh, Mr. M- Mr. President, we were shocked that the president is there. And the president says, no, I'm here to see Jonas Kwangwa because this man has wa- walked and worked in Angola for, for a long time. And so he put us in the map also because when they mention him, they mention Angola, his works here in Angola. So I'm here for him. And said, young man, who are you? I said, I'm his son. I said, okay, stand up. Talk to your dad. We'll come and talk. The experiences that I around the world. I remember also in 2014, we went to Algeria to 
do the Sahara show. And then we had to talk about the role of arts and culture in the liberation movement. And uh, the people of, uh, of uh, Sahara, we mm-hmm. right in a And he said, tell me your story. Then I'll write the music. Amandla is South African story. But you tell me your story so that I can write your, your, your and I can perform your, this day. Your story, not not Amandla. Amandla is South African. If you want something like that, there's a man to associate and align all those things with your struggles, because that's our struggle. In each and every country has got a different struggle, but we are all fighting for democracy and freedom. Because I think yeah, so in country my identity, sorry, it is Spain and all. Talk about Papa is, is that I had to grow up fast. My sister Spanky was relating to me that, that the answer is, you know, reminiscing about what it means to be Jonas Kwangwa's son. And uh, she said to me, I feel pity for you because you had to grow up fast. <laughs> and become also his manager. He had to grow up fast and become a father to your brother when Papa is not around. Because I used to take my brother, I used to take my brother and my younger sister to the movies and things like that. So when we came back from exile in the 90s mm-hmm. as children, we really appreciated that. We really loved that. And uh, that was the first time, actually, as a family, all of us, the kids were under one roof. So you get... You get Spinky as the eldest daughter, you get Mpo, and you get myself, who grew up, who went to exile very young, you know, in our teens and things like that. My brother and my sister, Baba Mbuma Lucy, went to stay with uh, with Tineke in Holland. Tineke helped the family with a lot of things. I mean, the, the community of Holland helped us. Um, yeah, those family, but we had to be together because when I'm not around my sister Mpo, I knew that Mpo will take care of Spanky. And then me and Mpo kind of with our from time as I remember even my sister when she was in Cuba. All right, that is uh, the son of uh, the late uh, legendary jazz musician. Uh, uh, his name is uh, Majalefe uh, Guangwa, talking about uh, his uh, father, Jonas uh, Guangwa. Then just uh, something I just uh, read uh, online, which was uh, put together by someone who's currently uh, part of a group of people uh, putting together a memoir of uh, Jonas Guangwa. And I thought it best articulates uh, what uh, Jonas Guangwa was about. And it says, music is not a zero-sum game with only one best. But if you seek to name one musician whose life in Embodies the South African people's struggle for a national culture. It must be trombonist, composer, and cultural activist Jonas Gwangwa, who was born on the 19th of October 1937 in Orlando, East Johannesburg, and died on the January 23rd in Johannesburg at the age of 83. 